I was either browsing around on Amazon or maybe it was uh, BookTuber profiles the other day, and I saw that this book had come out in one of those new Penguin Ink editions, and I was glad that they brought it out because I don't think it's read nearly enough for being the the sort of wry, funny book that it is. Um, it's uh, Stella Gibbons' Cold Comfort Farm. Uh, I have to say this book is really, really funny. Um, if you've read some certain things, and I'll tell you about those below. Uh, more than once I made a fool of myself while reading it in front of other people just sort of bursting out in spontaneous laughter when I got to a particular passage. It's pure parody. Uh, but of course it helps to know what's being parodied. Um, and what's being parodied here is um, the rustic rural life portrayed in the kind of novels that someone like Gibbons was weaned on. Um, D.H. Lawrence, Thomas Hardy, and uh, the novelist, who's now all but completely forgotten, Mary Webb. But even if you're not familiar with the dark, brooding nature of some of these characters, I think the book remains funny, because it's, it's aged, but it's aged relatively well. Uh, the book begins with the death of Flora Post's parents, and her relatively blasé reaction to that death, those deaths. Uh, unaffected though she is, she finds that her parents have left her no money to support her, and she simply can't bring herself to work for a living. So instead, she decides to impose upon her cousins, uh, the Stark Adders, who live at Cold Comfort Farm, with uh, only the aid of a favorite book called The Higher Common Sense. And when she moves in with the Stark Adders at Cold Comfort Farm, this is where all the fun begins. On arriving at Cold Comfort Farm, she finds uh, a host of backward, absurd rubes. I mean, these people are just yokels, rednecks, English rednecks, uh, with names like Irk, Elphine, and Amos. On the farm, there are four cows named graceless, aimless, feckless, and pointless. Um, presiding, presiding over the whole clan is the loony elderly matriarch, uh, Aunt Ada Doom, who at one point repeatedly declares uh, probably the, the famous line from the novel, uh, I saw something nasty in the woodshed. She keeps saying that over and over again. I saw something nasty in the woodshed. But, uh, None of this manages to really perturb Flora, whose Englishness, Englishness, English, Englishness, yes, um, sort of keeps her calm and cool and collected, um, because she sees, she sort of foreordains for herself this neat, tidy plan in which everyone is involved, so she sort of swoops into this universe to sort of tidy it up a little bit. She rescues Elphine from a freewheeling, uh, what she calls a loam and love child life of writing poetry, and marries her off to a local man by the name of Richard Hawk Monitor. Uh, she sets up Mr. Mybug, who's an officious uh, hack scholar who's working on a book supposedly demonstra demonstrating that the works of the Bronte sisters are really the product of their brother uh, Branwell and a girl named, uh, with a girl named Rennet. Um, Rennet, it's, you know, it's sort of a, an, an odd reference, but I think she's sort of playing off of the enzyme that exists in a cow's stomach, which helps in curdling it and making cheese. It's called Rennet. Um, sort of an obscure reference, but I think that's what she's trying to allude to there. Uh, perhaps her biggest accomplishment is convincing Aunt uh, Ada Doom to leave Cold Comfort Farm to finally uh, to leave the room that she's confined herself to for 20 years and to spend some time in Paris. Um, this novel has a wonderful lightness about it, uh, but it shouldn't be confused with being totally unserious. It's so uh, well, crafted, well crafted and full of sharpness and acerbic wit that it's tough to write it off as simply a, 
a parlor game satire. The narrative voice is remarkably tart and sardonic, but not too much so. It's, it's not overweening. Whenever you think that Flora will trip up in one of her plans, you find that she's already three steps ahead of you. In fact, she already has you, the reader, figured out. Uh, the silly, unbelievable characters do prevent Flora from having a big problem, capital B, capital P, to solve, but I always appreciated her ability to compartmentalize, rationalize, and order what, like I said earlier, she conceived to be a very disorderly universe. It struck me as a very English theme, uh, and you'll probably walk away from the novel smirking at yourself if you've ever admitted that you've uh, admired or, or even read a novel by someone like uh, Thomas Hardy or D.H. Lawrence, since the people who inhabit those novels are exactly like the Stark Adders. Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons.